Idemo ono Kuprišku. O Ivane. Ajmo sad. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear brothers and dear sisters uh, in arms. Uh, good evening, God bless. Bog vas Bog Ostoja, Hvala Jesus i Marija, for all those who understand those uh, beautiful, lovely words. Uh, good evening, Jozo. Good evening for all of you. Good evening for uh, Europe, uh, in, uh, for you in Europe, in homeland. Good afternoon for you in uh, USA, Canada, and uh, South uh, America. And good morning for you in Australia and New Zealand. We cover all the planet. all the time, time zones. You know by heart. You know all, all the time zones. Yes. I, uh, I know the only one that I know is the one that Michael is in. Yes. And uh, before uh, we introduce someone guest, I would yeah. like to ask you something. Uh, go ahead. Why we speak English uh, tonight? Is it uh, some uh, new uh, platform? Is it uh, well, what is it? Uh, trick question. Uh, okay. Uh, well, uh, 
Tonight's show uh, is dedicated to, uh, let's say, uh, second or third generation of Croats living all uh, over the world, and all those lovely people who do admire, uh, let's say, Croatia, and uh, uh, especially Croatian homeland uh, war, and uh, uh, what else to say? Uh, so we started right away with English, and I'm uh, sorry for all those, uh, our comrades, they didn't attend to this uh, English class that was uh, mandatory uh, uh, after the war, right? Yes. Uh, and so, yeah. This is a good uh, opportunity to, to practice uh, English oh, yeah. for us. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Andrea will help us. Uh, maybe she uh, translates something. What is... Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Andrea Brekalo Filipovic, uh, she is with us like uh, uh, every night, and uh, uh, we thank you, uh, Andrea, for all you do. Uh, and uh, uh, she uh, uh, she said that she would be translating something uh, during the, this interview uh, on creation for, for uh, these people they don't know. Uh, especially this goes for uh, the deep states agents. Uh, that at least suppose they don't speak English, so they're gonna be in big trouble tonight. <laughs> uh, okay, so, so uh, uh, without uh, further ado, uh, they will say exactly like that. Uh, let's say hi to our uh, guest, Mr. Michael Polaj. Good evening, Michael, and welcome to Polaj Chuke. Dobre večer i ispričavam se da ne mogu govoriti bolje hrvatski ako ako govorim bolje mi ćemo govoriti uh, hrvatski ali uh, uh, engleski je bolje uh, <laughs> ti vi govorite engleski bolje nego ja hrvatski uh, now you uh, you put us in a, in a, a awkward position because it turns out that you uh, speak like a Croatian <laughs> so you no you don't need to speak it but no, your know, creation is, is, is great. But uh, as I explained, uh, uh, this interview is uh, about all uh, our uh, beautiful people all over the place uh, who do not speak creation and would love to hear uh, our and your story, of course. Uh, so, uh, okay. Uh, you uh, are. Uh, for people who don't know this, uh, you're author of this book for Baka's Homeland, uh, which I'm sorry uh, it hasn't been uh, yet translated to creation, and it's all about uh, your your you know your life actually. <laughs> so uh, actually, I, if I can make a correction, it is translated now into Croatian. It's called well, Za Hrvatsku Moja Bake. Uh, okay. So it is in okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh. And it can it can be found um, right now. It can't be found uh, except I have I have a friend of mine who's selling it, Ante Bello, who's selling it occasionally when he goes to different places. Uh, so, uh, but other than that, right now I haven't been able to make arrangements to have it sold in bookstores in Croatia. Uh, but you can find it in Amazon.com. DE for Germany or uh, Australia would be Amazon.au. So it can be uh, America and Canada, Amazon.com. It can be found in both Croatian and English. Uh, okay. It's, uh, uh, haven't you uh, consider or haven't you talked to any uh, institution in Croatia about that book translated? So. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I, I think I may have some success getting it sold in with maybe Verbum or uh, Benedictus, one of those um, outlets. Um, oh. They have bookstores in various cities. Uh, the other bookstores, you know how things are over there, and um, it's not uh, maybe it's not the type of book that um, that they're interested in pushing because you know I understand that. The Ministry of Culture pushes some books, uh, but not other books, and so um, we'll try to get do the best we can to get around that. But um, there are some options that we have, and it will be out. But uh, like I said, uh, uh, you can't find it. I think in um, 
about around Lubushki, you could find it. Um, and also in, uh, if you ever go to an event where Ante Bello is, he's always selling his books and he sells my book also. So he's nice yeah. enough to do that for me. Yeah, I, I sympathize with that. Uh, we talk a lot about uh, that problem in our show uh, with uh, other authors, uh, you know, veterans and uh, people who do uh, uh, write books or, uh, you know, uh, involved in movies and documentaries so yeah they all run into a same 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 kind of problem uh, i think mladen pavkovic has the same problem with his books that he tries to publish yeah yes yes uh, uh, uh mladen uh, wrote a lot of uh, these columns and he has uh, zero chances to be a columnist you know uh, public uh, public figure in croatia so uh, it, it is sad because, you know, he's a veteran and uh, he's an example of the guy who understands uh, a lot and uh, he writes a, a good columns. So that's uh, what most important. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel sorry for, for, the, for everyone, especially, uh, actually, why especially? No, 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 especially you. I feel sorry for everyone who, who do uh, write about Croatia and uh, homeland uh, war and uh, times before that uh, when we were on the communist regime and stuff. So let's begin with that. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Not asked uh, what about is that book? Yeah, we, had a, uh, we have a question uh, from our viewer. Uh, so that, that book, what is it about in the question? If you can uh -huh. summarize, okay, so it, I'll try. It's a book. It's it's yeah. a really. Uh, I've read it. Uh, so uh, yeah, this is the book. Uh, you've sent me uh, a copy in English, and uh, it, it, it's a great book. And uh, you said a lot. But uh, when someone asks you what is it about, what would you tell them? Well, I would uh, I would divide it into sections. It's it's like basically three or four journeys um, that I describe in the book. So the the first part, first couple, uh, first chapter, second chapter actually is a is a journey with my grandmother. She she actually is the one who's responsible for exposing me to her love and therefore increased my love for Croatia, for Croatian people, for Croatian culture. I even loved the melody of her language because she would often be speaking Croatian and, and I didn't understand the word she was saying, but I, I loved the melody of the language. And so she was actually the door that I walked through when I entered into this love of Croatian, Croatian culture and uh, Croatian people. So uh, she, you know, she take, she should take the credit for that. Um, and then, um, there's the political journey, uh, beginning with my first introduction with Croatians in diaspora who were actually uh, very much on fire for Croatian independence. And this was uh, my first introduction to them was in 1979. Um, and so I, I was amazed by how much enthusiasm how dedicated they were to this whole concept of croatian independence they really lived their life almost completely devoted to this fight for croatian independence that is in spite of the fact that they were living in canada or united states and then later on i i met many people in australia the same way and and other places too uh, austria and argentina they were so devoted that they were really spending all kinds of time and money for the Croatian cause as far back. I mean, it begins, actually it begins much many decades before I was involved. Yeah. But I got involved in 1979, two people, I should mention their names. One is deceased now, his name is Marko Stipanicic and the other one is Pero Ivjets and one Marko Stipnicic was from Sen and, and Pero Ijec was is from uh, uh, Svetajana. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so they were just on fire for the Croatian cause. They brought me into the, I would call it a movement for Croatian independence. And then, um, you know, I began. Oh, Michael, how old were you? I was 25 when I was first really got involved. Um, and then that was the whole transition process. You begin by passing out leaflets, taking part in demonstrations, just like everybody, all Croatians in diaspora. You know, if they were in a Croatian community, they took part in some kind of demonstrations at some point against Yugoslavia. <laughs> and so that's where it starts passing out leaflets, protesting against <clears throat> so-called Yugoslav singers who would come to uh, various places in America and Canada. And we would protest against them because we thought that the uh, UDBA was actually bringing them to influence the Croatian community by unifying Croatians around, imagine names like Lepa Brena and people like that. Yeah, <laughs> Croatians yeah, were yeah. going there. So we were, we were protesting against those kind of things. Yeah. So that's a journey, that journey. And then eventually it leads to other things. Uh, so finally, uh, the last part of the journey, I guess, uh, would be the more active political slash uh, military journey, let's say. Uh, so that's when I and four friends, after all these years, years and years of doing these political things, we finally saw that in 1991, Croatia had a chance to become independent. They were being attacked by Serb Chetniks yep. and the terrible things that were going on in Slavonia um, and also in Dalmatia. And, you know, you guys know as well as I do yeah, what, so what they were doing around Kanin and the, uh, the whole area. And so we uh, decided to come since we had to actually, you know, there's a saying in America, in English, actually, I think, put your money where your mouth is. Yeah. Or if you're going to talk to talk, you have to walk to walk. That's yeah. another way of saying it. If you're going to talk about Croatian independence, and then when Croatia needs you, you're going to stand back and wait for somebody else to do it. We couldn't do that. So we, we came to Croatia to help uh, achieve independence. On the, way to, on the way there, I was arrested in Germany. Uh, the Germans uh, confiscated they, some uh, equipment that they said was illegal, like rifles and night vision equipment and night vision scopes and things like that. And then... Yeah, um, you know, rifles <laughs> illegal, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, they let me go. I spent some time in, in the jail there while they were interrogating me. And um, finally, they let me go. Um, I made my way to Croatia with the, all of us met up because they were also, my friends were also stopped in, in England. And uh, so, but we all met up in Germany and we took a bus from Germany to Croatia in, in uh, October 13th, I think it was 1991. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, then there was the war and that's a, that's a long story. Um, but in the end, when I came back after uh, after the last ceasefire between the JNA and, and Croatia, I went back to America, and well, I actually we, all five of us did. Uh, and uh, I think it was two months later, it might have been three months later. I was um, my home was raided by federal U.S. federal agents, and they were looking for. I suppose they were looking for weapons and any evidence that I was involved in other uh, smuggling uh, activity. Okay. And so um, that uh, that investigation lasted five years, which means that in those five years of the investigation, <clears throat> they follow you, they tap your phones, they go through your garbage looking for any evidence. Uh, they talk to people that know you, they, they talk to your friends, they talk to your employers, because they, they had the impression that I was buying things and then selling it to Croatia for the war movement. 
and uh, they were looking for a possible location where I was storing the equipment before it was shipped overseas. And so finally, uh, five years later, they indicted me, uh, but only for, they only indicted me for the weapons that I took to Germany. Uh, they didn't indict me for anything else. Um, and then um, uh, I spent two and a half years of court proceedings. And um, I should mention also that my attorney at the time who handled the case was a high, really high level federal US defense attorney in the United States who was Jewish, who really supported me and the Croatian movement. And he understood completely what we were doing and why we were doing it. And he supported that. And he said, because he was always hoping that he could um, join the Jewish defense forces in Israel, but he never really had the courage to do that. But so he thought that by helping me, he could at least help somebody establish freedom. Um, nice. And it was, that was very nice of him. And it, cause it, it was, very expensive U.S. Uh, US uh, defense attorney who I could not afford to pay. Actually, uh, while I was, are... I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that uh, during that five-year period while I was investigation and before I was indicted, I still worked in Cro for Croatia. So I, I went back and forth many times. Even after the ceasefire, I continued to go there because, you know, then problems started in Bosnia. Herzegovina, and uh, you know, I saw a need that Croatia still needed to have. Uh, they still needed to to supply a, a modern army with the modern equipment and modern uniforms and everything that an army could possibly need. So, um, I tried to help them with that by becoming a registered foreign agent and doing those kind of things on their behalf, both politically, we were licensed uh, or we were, we were registered to do political things for the Croatian government, but also to look for any material that they might need, no matter where the material was. Yeah, okay. So, um, and then I, I continued to work for the Croatian Information Center at the same time. Um, and then finally, you know, at the end, uh, Gojko Shushak, Minister Shushak, was able to get the American government. That's an interesting story in itself, but it's so long and detailed that, you know, as you say, we have to, you'd have to read the book to see what, how that happened. But it was, uh, it was extraordinary what uh, Minister Shushak did how he came to my defense. And also I, I would have to say the deputy minister of defense, um, um, uh, Chosich was also very instrumental in that in helping me. And I just saw him last month actually when I was in, in Zagreb. Um, so he was very helpful and, and Mr. Shushak with his friendship with William Perry, who was the minister, uh, the secretary of defense for America they had a friendship, pretty close friendship, and um, he was able to talk Mr. Perry into talking the American officials into dropping the charges against me. So other than that, you know, the, because the American government actually, in the beginning, when they first indicted me, they offered to give me, I would only have to spend 14 months in jail yep. if I explained everything I did, who was with me, how we did it, I would have to explain all that. And I told them, well, I'll take my chances because I was looking at a potential 60 years in prison. So 14 months versus 60 yeah. years in prison, it makes you think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, I, I, I did, um, I just told them I'll take my chances with the, with the trial and let's go to trial. But thankfully, Mr. Shushak was able to help me out with that. Great job, great. Uh, thank you for that too. Uh, <coughs> make you rest in peace. Uh, tell me, Michael, uh, uh, during those uh, times in the end, did uh, any institution on behalf of Croatia, uh, you know, approach you and ask you to, you know, uh, to stay here and 
to help or uh, do whatever you are doing? Um, no, I don't, I don't, nobody did ask me to do that because I think they could see that it might be more valuable to, if I went back and forth, uh, and I'm not sure exactly why, but I, I was, uh, when I was indicted, many people came to me and told me that I should leave the United States and actually flee and go to Croatia to live. But I, I, I didn't want to do that, you know. Yeah. Uh, that would be like admitting I did something wrong, and I wasn't going to admit that I did anything wrong. Yeah, you're right. You, you made the right choice uh, after all. Uh, okay, uh, tell us, uh, back in those days, you, you were 25, you told us. Uh, in, in, those, in those days, I mean, America, man, it's, uh, it's uh, <laughs> uh, you know, everybody's dream uh rock and roll and stuff you know and uh there you are uh you know hooked up with your uh uh, uh love for croatia and, uh, and uh, independence and uh looking back uh looking back to that time uh, uh what would you say uh when you come to croatia today uh was it no, that would sound a stupid question. Was it worth it? Of course, it was worth it. We got, uh, you know, Croatia is a, you know, is a state. So uh, we thank you for all you did. But you know, uh, do you still see a reason for your activism like back in those days? Huh. Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I think everybody, you guys who were in the military, in the army, you can ask yourself the same question. And yep. I think, and it's not just Croatia, every former soldier always asks the same question. Was it worth it? Vietnam veterans ask the same thing. World War II veterans might ask the same thing. Croatian veterans might ask the same thing. Because you know, you, who were involved in the war know more than anybody else what was involved in winning the war. Yeah. The, unfortunately, the generation growing up now in Croatia doesn't really know. And the leaders of the generation in Croatia now weren't in the war most of the time. They were doing something else or somewhere else, but they were not in the battle. So, I think those who experienced the war have a different view of the war, and therefore they ask the question, was it worth it? Because you know people that died in the war. You know people that were killed. You know what the Chetniks did during the war. You, But what we don't know is what would have happened had we not defended Croatia. Yeah, but I mean, I know in my heart, I know what would have happened. It would have been worse than Blyberg. The massacres that happened at Blyberg would have been small in number compared to what would have happened had Yugoslavia, Yugoslav Serbs and Chetniks, had they won, they would have destroyed Bosnia Herzegovina, they would have destroyed Croatia, they would have killed. Because, and we know that because we know what they did when they took over the Croatian territory. So. We don't have to guess what would have happened. We only have to look at what they did at the end of World War II and what they were doing during the Homeland War uh, for in 25% of the territory that they controlled. Yeah, that's true. So was it worth it? Um, I think to, to save those lives, I think it was worth it. Yeah, definitely was. Are they on the right path? I don't know. Is there any difference between American veterans and uh, homeland veterans? What do you think about it? You know, that's an interesting question. I, um, I see more similarities between American veterans and Croatian veterans because they, they also feel betrayed, especially after the Vietnam War when uh, they would come home from Vietnam and, you know, I never saw this with my own eyes, but they say that they were being spit on by some of the American demonstrators, some of the young people who were demonstrating against the war. 
So when you come back after seeing people die and you risk your life and then you come back and people are spitting on you, um, it makes you uh, it makes you really ask the question, was it worth it? <clears throat> um, but also, you know, there's another similarity with veterans, I think, no matter where you're at, and that is it's difficult to talk to somebody who wasn't there about what you experienced because there's no way for somebody who was sitting at home while you were fighting to explain what you saw. You, you cannot explain what it's like to be shot at, to be bombed. You can't explain that feeling that you have. And when you try to explain it, um, you know, they, they just either don't want to listen or they yeah. like, oh, yeah, I know all about that. You don't have to tell me that. Yaznam <laughs> Svei. Yeah, we, we, we hear a lot of that. But isn't it funny, uh, you mentioned uh, earlier Lepa Brena. Uh, in terms of uh, you know uh, demonstrating against these concerts uh, and uh, these uh, Yugoslav stars, but uh, uh, would it surprise you if I told you that uh, more people listen to Brand today than uh, back then? So uh, in that sense, uh, I was uh, asking you, like uh, we talked earlier about uh, this Petokaka shit. I must use this word. Uh, uh, this red star that was a legitimate target in Homeland War, uh, they were shooting at us and we were shooting at them. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, in Grad Rijeka, in the middle of Croatia, uh, Rijeka is the culture center for, uh, for <coughs> European culture center for this year, yeah. And uh, what they have to display is this giant petokraka on the top of this building. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, so we don't really need to tell uh, anyone our uh, war stories and, uh, you know, things we saw uh, in battle and, and, and stuff. We don't wanna, you know, burden anyone with these uh, images and stuff. Uh, they can't understand us, of course they can't. Uh, I cannot understand uh, average uh, firefighter, so uh, it's it's only logical. But yeah. don't you think, uh, think that the rest of uh, the nation and all of the people should understand uh, the the difference between uh, Red Star, you know, and, and and her being on top of the building and uh, her not being on top of the building. <laughs> Yeah, it's that is a, it's a disturbing image to see <clears throat> that symbol. This the same symbol <clears throat> in 19, May of 1945, and for years after that, that same symbol was worn by people who were butchering Croatians in Blyberg, or in Maribor, or in Setsil. That same symbol was worn when they did all of those war crimes. The same symbol was worn between 1990, 1991 and 1995 by people who were shooting at civilians by, you know, it wasn't just shooting one soldier to another. Those people with the red stars were bombing apartment buildings in Osijek. They were bombing Vukovar. They were killing civilians. They were raping women, putting them in rape camps into so-called rape hotels with that star on their head. And now they take that star and they put it on top of a building in a free and independent Croatian state. To me, it's no different than uh, uh, somebody in Jerusalem raising the swastika above a building in Jerusalem and the Israeli people embracing that. Who, who would embrace, what Jew would uh, embrace a Nazi symbol on top of a building and yet in croatia like you said in uriaca yeah. they have this star on top of a building that nobody can do anything about it's it's insulting it's insulting to the it's not only insulting to the veterans who fought in the war it's an insult to all the people who wanted 
to achieve independence for centuries in Croatia, who, who that was their dream, right? We, we know the history of Croatia. Yeah. The dream was Croatian independence. And then once you get independence, not only do you immediately almost turn it over, you turn over some of your sovereignty to the European Union, but you embrace the symbols that were worn by your former tormentors. It's unbelievable to me. Yeah. Uh, Sorry to go so long, but it's it's uh, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah uh, I would agree, and uh, of course, uh, but let's say uh, these processes are uh, uh, really uh, possible just because of the uh, let's say this uh, 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 rampant uh, globalism and uh, people who do uh, keep track of uh, politics in the United States, uh, which is important yeah. because you know after all this is the super superpower and uh, a lot of things depends uh, on America and uh, how they run things. So uh, you see this creeping socialism and, and, and I don't know, uh, it begins uh, to spread in places like like United States. So uh, after the Iron Curtain fell, uh, we thought that whole world uh, would see uh, uh, how bad that uh, system is and was. So uh, I, I don't know, I don't know what to say. You did uh, a documentary. That's the other thing that I would like to talk to you. You did a documentary on Bible. So uh, you're very uh, well uh, familiar with the topic. And also you did an interview with some English soldiers uh, uh, who were soldiers at that time. And uh, yeah, uh, their testimony clearly said uh, what we are saying all the time. And uh, uh, I don't know, they call it a uh, revision of the history but i don't see it that way i just see it like the truth coming out so uh it's something about that movie and what motivated you to to do it and how that went by yeah that so that movie um i originally my idea originally was not for a movie but my idea originally was only to document on videotape the eyewitness testimony of Croatians who were involved in Bleiberg uh, before they died, because uh, this was 1985 when I first became involved in that. And I saw that they were dying, uh, you know, they were getting to be old men. And uh, I didn't want the fact that they might die and take these stories and memories with them. So I wanted to get them on videotape much very similar to what the, the Jewish people did um, with the survivors of the, uh, of the of the Holocaust, and so I, with the help, of, and, and I also have to say that I approached different communities in diaspora, in Canada, in the United States, uh, in Australia. Australia was a huge help. To the making of the document uh, to gathering the documentation because not only did some of the survivors would I, I i i videotaped some of the survivors in australia sydney melbourne adelaide geelong uh, canberra but um but they helped with financing the whole project i would say that uh, canada i mean croatia uh, i'm sorry australia was mostly responsible for financing the whole film. All the money that it took to, to document, the travel that went involved in getting the eyewitness testimony, and then finally for putting all that material together in one film. So I, I, I wanted to document these, these older people before they died. Then I started that in 1985. In 1989, the Berlin Wall went down, and uh, there were glimmers of hope that Croatia would be independent. You could see things happening in Eastern Europe and Poland, uh, Soviet Union. And so somewhere around 1990, I decided 
to make a movie out of this, to put it in one and a half hour video documentary. The reason I wanted to do that, to make it from just gathering material to make a movie was because I had listened by this time hundreds and hundreds of hours of Croatians talk about what they experienced. Experience meaning murder, meaning uh, unbelievable genocide, m meaning the, the worst kind of torturous deaths that you can imagine being perpetrated on them, primarily by Chetnik Serbs who were inside the, the JNA at that time, but also some Croatian uh, communists too. Yeah. And uh, I saw that, I knew that after all this material that I had, that if Croatia decided to become independent and made that move and voted in the referendum for Croatia to become independent, and they either failed or if they surrendered, I was convinced that the, the bloodbath would start happening worse than it was in Bleiburg. So that's why I put the hour and a half t uh, film together. I sent it to political leaders in Croatia, like um, Dr. Tudman, like um, um, uh, Zvonimir Cicak, uh, Dobrosal Paraga, uh, Gojko Šušak. I, I sent it to them so, with, a, with a letter saying, "Don't once you go down that path, don't ever surrender because this is what's going to happen if you do. I was convinced of it. And so that's why I put the film together. And then uh, I smuggled four suitcases of the film across the border from Austria into so-called Yugoslavia at the time. And uh, by train, that's when it was still uh, uh, run by Yugoslavia and the Yugoslav uh, customs uh, people on the trains and whatnot. Uh, and then I showed it for the first time in May of 1991 before the referendum for Croatia. And the Ante Belio was uh, instrumental in getting that done. And we showed it at the Mimara Museum. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was really the first time. And I think it was the first film documentary about Bleiberg, I believe. That's nice, and uh, yeah. uh, and, and he had to uh, smuggle it. He, nah. he did a lot of smuggling, don't you think? Yes, huh? yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> you, you may consider some, uh, you know, career in. <laughs> 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 it was all a training, you know, the the smuggling the tapes across, and uh, you know, um, we had done some other smuggling too with some audio tapes. We would put a. We would take an audio tape in those days. There was just an audio tape and the first five minutes or 10 minutes of the tape would be Croatian music. And then the last 10 minutes would be Croatian music. And then the whole section in between 50, 40, 50 minutes of the tape would be political instructions and would be talking about Croatian independence. And then we would take those tapes and smuggle them into, into Croatia and People, we would have people that could travel and they would drop it. They would just leave it in a bathroom sink or something in you know, different places, or we would mail it to people who didn't even expect to get it. You know, they just, you know, one day in the mail, they got a cassette tape and then they started listening to the music. And then pretty soon it, they started talking about Croatian independence and you need to uh, prepare for the independence movement. <laughs> so it was, uh, it, was, it was crazy times in those days. Yeah, yeah, fine. Yoza, have any question? No. Let's continue. Will you see uh, the movie? Part yeah. Of the movie? Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, we do have a we do have a clip out of that movie of yours. Uh, and uh, I say this is kind of interesting because uh, uh, these uh, uh, English uh, English officers are uh, talking about uh, those days and uh, uh, it, it does, doesn't have any titles but just a second uh, we have to go around these technical details okay here we go
Okay. Okay, this is better. Okay, let's play it. And then we'll comment a bit. Uh, this is a, okay. This is a part when you talk to uh, this, uh, uh, it was the soldier, English soldier. And uh, yeah. Okay, we are starting off with these shots of Yazovka. This is the famous cave in in, uh, in Croatia called Yazovka, uh, where hundreds of bones are found and remains of, of the people that were just shot and uh, torn into this pit. <laughs> Just for people to see the, the, uh, to see the extent of that crime. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, they talk about about wires. They found wires. Uh, uh, the people were bound. Yeah. Bones and wires. This is English soldier, or, or, or I think he was a sergeant or something. Okay, uh, just a second. And there were 6,000 of them, and we were ordered to send them... Okay, uh, can you can you walk us through just a little bit, uh, just a second, I have to pause it. For advice, for advice from the... This first guy. Are we to send the civilian? This first guy, uh, who is he? Um, I can't see what you have on the video right now, so I'm still looking at Yazovka, but um, I believe that I can hear a voice of somebody that sounds like um, uh -huh, a you former can't, uh, British intelligence what... officer named Nigel Nicholson. Uh, no, the guy before him. Uh... Yeah, the, what I saw was just the Yazovka. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh... Okay, so the guy before him would be Colin Gunner. Yeah. Colin Gunner is his name, and he was a captain in the British Eighth Army. And he was standing actually on the bridge yes, in Lava well, Moon. Yeah, this is the guy. And the answer came back. Yes, if, uh, yes, if uh, there are camp followers. And then I asked. And then I asked. 
I feel a little trouble with the posing of it. Oh, it's. Uh, is any person I ever young but this guy here he um he witnessed the, the creations being sent over the bridge in lava moon and uh, he was under orders to force them across the bridge and he also witnessed the the uh, Yugoslav partisans killing civilians as well as soldiers in that area by the bridge where he was and then throwing their bodies into the river Durava below and i yeah. thought it was important to have these british eighth, eighth army officers because they weren't croatians and they weren't croatians from diaspora they weren't well, like, you know they can't say it was well, a lie like these everybody. are british who were actually involved yeah uh okay uh since i have a little trouble with it uh posing it and uh you talking over it uh Okay, people got sense of it. Uh, yeah, if, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm sorry. I, I should have let him talk. Uh, oh, no, you clearly uh, are a, a little a few seconds behind. I just put it uh, put it off. Uh, so it's not longer on the, on the screen, this video. Uh, but uh, never mind. I have some trouble with pose in it it's uh, it's too little and i i can't really see the pause button so i keep fiddling with it and uh <laughs> you know it's a distraction uh but anyway uh people got the sense of it uh, you made this uh a movie and uh, for us here uh maybe and uh, for your american friends or english people who are watching it uh these are the witnesses of that uh, uh of that crime and they are clearly, clearly uh, stating it as a crime. So it is, it is a kind of a disturbing uh, that uh, we are still in the process of fighting for that truth, uh, for that truth yeah. about these uh, events. Uh, so every year when we uh, celebrate uh, Blyberg tragedy, uh, uh, we always had trouble. Uh, we always had problems and we always have these uh, 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 social justice warriors and uh, socialists, you know, <coughs> uh, writing even letters to Austrian governments uh, and, and stuff like that, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, to interfere with that. And uh, what do you think? I, is there anything more that we can do? Uh, uh, we wrote books uh we made movies uh we can't stop uh, talking about it and still we have trouble with it why is that yeah well uh so that's uh these these people who are opponents and uh, opponents of the commemorate i think we have to remember it's a commemory and we have to re remind the, the socialists although it doesn't really matter because no matter what the argument is they do not want to freely admit that the socialist Yugoslav state was responsible for killing these innocent people. Yeah. They don't want to, they will never admit that. Um, so, but we know what it is. It's a commemoration. It's a, we're, when we go to the mass, for example, in Blyberg Field, we're commemorating not the army that they belong to we're commemorating those people's lives we're not saying that the ustasha movement was the right movement what we're saying is these people were innocent either they had surrendered and therefore the british army was responsible for taking them in and giving them protection or they were women and children and men who were civilians who weren't involved in the combat and didn't deserve to be killed. So in, no matter what, you know, they will say that, you know, we've even heard, I think, Croatian politicians recently have said that they, the, the Yugoslav partisans didn't kill enough. Yes. Can you imagine? I mean, who, yes. who can say something like that? Yes. And so 
now they want us not only to not talk about it, but they don't want us to even commemorate the lives. And that's really what we're commemorating, the lives of those people that lived and were butchered. And so we're not commemorating the, the political movement. We're not, it's not politics. It's about commemorating the lives of innocent civilians and surrendered soldiers. And by the way, they keep talking about Ustasha. We all know, or we should remind them that not every soldier was a Ustasha. Yep. There were Domobrans in that there also, they were just people who were inscripted into the Croatian military. So, um, you know, I think I, I was talking to this friend of mine, Ante Bello, recently, and he said that, you know, uh, in Sarajevo, they were able to have a commemoration mass even in 1991 for the Bleiberg victims. So why wouldn't they be able to have a mass for them uh, today in 2020? Uh, they just want us to, to, to forget, they want the world to forget to what they did. Uh, the yeah. British are not so bad that, you know, they, the British have admitted that they took part in it, but they always have an excuse for why they didn't do it. And when I spoke about this one time in the, in the Croatian Sabo in Zagreb, and I said uh, there were some Brits there, including Tolstoy was there. And um, I said that not only are, do the British have blood on their hands, but they have blood up to their elbows for what they did. And the British got very upset with me for saying that. So, um, but we have to just keep reminding that the truth is the truth and um, it has nothing to do with politics. It hasn't, has to do with remembering the lives of those civilians and surrendered soldiers who were butchered. And, you know, there's, and you know, Bleiberg is, a, I wish that uh, I could convince somebody in the in Croatian uh, intellectuals to go to England and go through the archives in England to look for stuff that I left off because I saw many things in those archives that I didn't have the time to devote because I was focused mostly on Bleiberg and the uh, the death marches after Bleiberg. I didn't have time to go into the other areas, but I uncovered a lot of stuff when I was there that a Croatian historian really should go there and go through those papers uh, because it, it's it's enlightening the the things that you can find in those British archives. How many times this move this movie has shown on Croatia TV or on some other TV in Croatia? Do you know it? Uh, that on my movie, actually, it was never shown on TV, but um, <laughs> Laudato TV did make a very good movie called Magnum Crimen. And that was on, I think it's on Croatian Hot TV, uh, I think um, every year now for the last three years, I think in May, they, they have shown their TV. And their, their, their movie actually incorporates a lot of the material that I, I donated to them to make the movie. Some of the British, uh, the interviews with the British soldiers, uh, the documents, for example, they they use that, and they really, you know, um, Nada Perkachan at Laudato TV was the director for that movie, and she did a fantastic job. So, I would encourage anybody you can get that movie today if you go on the Laudato TV website or in one of their stores in one of the cities, you can get that movie. It's an excellent movie. Yeah, uh, Laudato TV uh, sadly is not a mainstream uh, media in Croatia. It's not uh, connected to too many institutions. So, uh, yeah, they're doing a good job. Uh, but uh, you noticed we laughed a little bit when you mentioned these academics and uh, archives. <laughs> we got archives in Belgrade, we got archives in, in Zagreb, and uh, we got uh, archives to lower the place, but turns out that uh, uh, the you know uh, average uh, average uh, historian in uh, Croatia is a kind of a 
socialists. <laughs> it just belongs uh, to a mindset, uh, to mindset you just uh, described. Uh, so uh, their job, uh, actually, their job is not to go to the archives and, uh, uh, and let the truth uh, be guide uh, for uh, everything we do because it's uh in the end all about that uh, it's about what you have said it's about lives and commemorating those lives uh unjustly taken and uh and uh, uh yeah in these uh and this other thing uh is uh educational and uh, uh while i'm at it uh we had a new curriculum uh set up uh last year yeah, yeah. and uh once again english helped us uh set up the shit uh in canadian still <laughs> so once again we are not satisfied with the uh, help of the english i know uh in these uh new times let's say uh, uh especially after brexit there are new kind of uh, english politics uh, uh yeah, yeah. Thing. So maybe there's still hope, but you know they uh, they didn't you know treat us uh, kindly with that curriculum, and in that curriculum, uh, Bleiberg tragedy doesn't have any you know. Uh, I, I don't I know. No. I, I don't. I don't think it's even mentioned in the maybe. in the in the, in the uh, elementary school books, seventh or eighth grade. I, I don't think it's even mentioned. Uh, but I could be wrong. Uh, but it's not too far from the truth. So uh, once again, uh, it's Do yes. you have any uh, any meeting with the uh, Croatian uh, authority about this problem and, and maybe some uh, together work on this problem? And uh, and which problem and the the curriculum? Mm -hmm. So next, uh, to make a new investigation to and something like that. Uh, no, the, I don't. Uh, you know, my contacts now with the with Croatia are with the people that were formerly involved in the Croatian government. So uh, I have no contacts with these uh, new ones. With the people that. The new, the new ones. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These are a new breed of politicians. Uh, you know, they're they're new, but they have the same slogans as before. <laughs> yeah, the, new, yeah. Fa new faces, but same slogans. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I often say that they they took their grandfather's slogans from the attic and dusted it off, and then they talk about the same thing. Yeah, maybe maybe the books. Maybe uh, maybe they should you know change some books they they're reading. <laughs> uh, well, you know we have the same problem here in America. We have a lot of uh, socialists who claim to be anti-fascist, and um, I have to explain to them. You know that the Nazis were socialists, right? Yeah. You're saying you're a socialist, but the Nazis were national socialists. They were socialists. Yes. Just like the Soviets were socialists, Yugoslavs were socialists. Uh, so, but they don't really understand that when they say they're socialist, that they, the national socialists, are closer in ideology to the international socialists than we who want democracy and independence and freedom. Totally right. They they are together. The socialist and the the, the national socialists and the international socialists are just two sides of the same coin. Yeah, uh, people forget that uh, uh, national socialism uh, uh, was based on uh, Marxism. So uh, the Marxism is, right. is based for, for uh, uh, both fascism and national socialism. So you're right. And uh, we don't uh, teach our kids in school that stuff. Uh, uh, we don't know that uh, Marx was uh, also a Satanist. I, I don't uh, say this lightly. Uh, uh, the, That's true. Yeah, it's true. Uh, he wrote uh, a poem uh, about Satan. And uh, I mean, yeah, this is true. And uh, we, as 
this is globally now so we have to be very very careful uh, these uh, chinese people are uh, uh, pretty uh, pretty uh, i don't know hyped up <laughs> lately about uh, their projects and uh, their comments too so i don't know uh, the struggle is uh, is on and we as a creations uh, uh, as a matter of fact we didn't deserve uh, this these communists never let go and uh, you know as soon as the war was over uh, you know uh, our barrels were still hot and uh, they just you know uh, they just kept doing what they do the best they took over media uh, and a good part of our culture so our stories couldn't couldn't break through uh, even those uh, tragedy tragedies like Viborg uh, yes, I know it is still a controversial topic, uh, although we have a, a new scientific uh, evidence about it, and it's a taboo, taboo uh, topic. So uh, I don't know. Uh, whatever you did, whatever you do, helps, uh, and I thank you for it, of course. So uh, no surrender. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, that's it exactly. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I often say that, uh, you know, St. Paul says that if God is on your side, who can be against you? So if we know we're on doing the right thing and we're new, we know we're doing the good thing, then there's nothing they can really do to us. Um, so we just have to continue. And you guys are doing a great job. Uh, and everybody, all of your, uh, your, the people that you work with, and that you come in contact with, uh, they're also doing a great job because uh, I know, you know, I was there in 1991 yeah. when you guys joined the Croatian forces. And I remember perfectly what the Croatian army was in those days. It was yeah. nothing near what it is today when you guys were running around in tennis shoes and uh, t-shirts and, you know, the yeah, Rambo style. <laughs> and so, an army, man. But uh, it worked as clockwork. Uh, and uh, we had that uh, all started up back then when you were active too. All these people, you know, uh, kept the fire going. Uh, so we were able to pick arms at the right moment uh, because the fire was in us. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, those were the days, and uh, I would do it all over again. And that's uh, apart from from that and, 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 and that ugly side of the war, is the best part of my life. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you uh, you put yourself at risk. In uh, in United States, uh, and uh, I don't know. I, it's it's a thing to admire because uh, you really didn't have to do it. <laughs> I mean, really, uh, you were in a good yeah. place. Uh, third generation, uh, you didn't, you know. But uh, whatever your granny planted in you, it was great. It was good, and uh, I thank her for it. Well, yeah, thank you. And she, she was a wonderful person, and I still remember her with great love. And um, and I think that's why I, I, you know, I that's why I come to Croatia every year. That's why I plan on spending more and more time uh, in Croatia in future years. I already spent at least three months there. So, uh, but it's a beautiful country. The Croatian people. There are problems with the government, and but you know the the roots are good. So if the roots are good, the plant that grows from that can't be anything but good. So I would just uh, encourage everybody to stay with it. Don't get uh, reject dejected by what's going on politically. Those people will be gone at some point. And uh, but the you know we've seen what Croatian history is like for.
for centuries. This desire for creation, independence, and sovereignty has continued, and it's not going to stop now. Uh, so um, they can try to stop it. They can try to chip away at sovereignty so that it's slowly removed, but they they can't because it's somehow it's inbred into the into the heart of the Croatian people to want to have sovereignty and independence. Yeah, so that's my yeah, little, little that. speech. How often you visit Croatia now? Every year. Uh, my wife is from there, so uh, we we spend time there every year. Her family has a house uh, close to Šibenik, and so we spend a lot of time there. And um, um, we're looking at the possibilities of spending much more time there. Yeah. Uh, for sure, in the next four years, uh, four years from now, for sure we will spend. Uh, once she retires officially um, in four years, then we'll spend, uh, you know, most of the year there. And um, if she can retire this year or she has to retire this year, then we'll we'll start spending more time there right now. Yeah. Like well, next it year. Is, it is Croatia. It's a really beautiful country. Everyone uh, says that. It is on the uh, on the tourist map, so uh, people are lovely. <laughs> what English would say, uh, and I I can uh, I can't uh, wait to you know meet you in person and have a beer. Uh, it looks like you uh, froze. Or can we hear it? Can we hear you? Yes, I, I, I have your number now, so that's uh, definitely w w what I plan to do next year. I'll give you a call for sure. Yeah, super. Uh, uh, those uh, were the kind words and the words we all need, uh, especially now. Uh, so many creations, especially young people, they want to you know, uh, run away. They want to go to Germany or uh, Ireland or somewhere. Uh, I can understand that. I can relate to that, but uh, uh, I, I wish uh, that isn't a case. I wish uh, that uh, much more people, uh, Croats, come back to, to Croatia uh, and with deeper roots in uh, these countries. Uh, so, yeah, uh, uh, your move is going to be uh, improvement. Uh, for your lifestyle and for your peace of mind. <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah, you're right. We're going to make that happen. Yeah. yeah. Yozo, have you got any questions? Uh, oh. Oh, I'm done with this uh, night. It's, uh, it was very, very nice. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Michael Yeah. for all what he did and what he do now. Yeah, of course. Um, Michael, uh, have you got anything? Uh, I mean, to say uh, or uh, convey any any message? Uh, uh, the only I would only add one thing, if, and uh, thank you, Yozo, for those kind words. I appreciate that, and uh, and um, I appreciate you, Petso, for everything that you do. Uh, in closing, the only thing I would like to say is. There are cases in, um, we have many people, many Chetniks who ha have fled uh, and tried to get refugee status into the United States. We have a lot of them here. Even though they were involved in war crimes in Croatia and, and uh, so-called so Subsekraina, they were involved in war crimes, including the, the town my, where my own family is from, Petrinja, and they live here in the United States. They, some of them have been indicted already by the Croatian government, but they continue to live here in America. Uh, so I would encourage anybody, if they are listening from America, to, and you're aware of this, these people, to notify the um, war crimes uh, committee that's that works with the um, 
the uh, Immigration and Naturalization Service for Homeland Security. They have a war crimes unit set up just for going after war criminals who fled and lied about their on their application. They lied and they said that they were not involved in combat in Croatia. And then they came here and lived. We have many of them and some of them have been sent back actually already to Croatia to stand for trial. So that's that's what I was going to add. That if you know of some, if you know of somebody that was sent back from America to stand trial in Croatia, make sure that those courts put them on trial and don't just let them go back wherever they came from. Make sure that they've been indicted in Croatia, that they are put on trial in Croatia, and then get a sentence. Some of these people killed multiple people with many, many witnesses. And they lived here, they got sent back. And I, and we really don't know what happens to them after that, if Croatia actually puts them on trial and then puts them in jail. But Croatians in Croatia have to keep on top of that and make sure that they're prosecuted and put in prison for the murders that they committed to civilians. And we also in America have to continue notifying authorities when we know of a Chetnik war criminal who lives among us um, to notify the war crimes unit in the, uh, with the uh, Homeland Security and they will start an investigation on those people. Uh, I couldn't agree more with that. Uh, uh, I, I can't say that I uh, hear of any recent case uh, in which uh, would some Chetnik would be sent from America here. Have you heard of any such a case lately? Yeah, I, actually, uh, I have uh, one. Some. Uh, so, Michael, you know of that any uh, any case that was actually uh, prosecuted that way in Croatia? Because I don't follow yes. uh, these main. I know he also uh, do uh, follow it, and uh, he uh, he did hear some news about it. But, I think one or two. <laughs> but it, it isn't uh, it isn't uh, like uh, you know a dozen cases or anything. It's not on a big scale. Maybe one or two. That's, that's it. Well, I think the, the Homeland Security estimates that there's possibly a hundred Chetniks living in America yeah. who lied oh, okay. on their entry yeah. visas. Yeah. But I know of one case, for example, I have one here. His name is Slobdan Mutic. He was uh, indicted oh. by the Croatian government for murders that he committed in Petrinja. Now, this is not me saying this. This is what the U.S. Homeland Security says. Uh, yep. And he was um, he was um, returned back to Croatia to stand trial last year. Last year. Huh? So, yeah. So, so, and he's from Pet. The murders happened in Petrinja. Well, okay. So the last name is Mutic, and uh, the Croatian government did indict him. The uh, I think it's the Opcina and, and Sisak indicted him for those war crimes. They notified the, um, or some people notified the uh, war crimes unit here in America, and they started an investigation that lasted a couple years. But finally, in 1991, uh, they sent them back. And I mean, not, not sorry, not 1991, uh, 2019, they sent him back. <laughs> and he committed those murders in 1992. So you can imagine how many years he lived in freedom. I think they, they even say that he lived in Cleveland, Ohio at the time uh, at the time he was sent back. So it's happening, you know, uh, but we have to keep on top of him. And especially in Croatia, you have to keep on top of the people so that the courts actually prosecute and put them in prison. Yeah. Tell me, Michael, how big is the Croatian community uh, where you live? Where, uh, actually, where <laughs> are you living? I live in uh, in the suburb of Phoenix, Arizona. So the, our community here is not so big. I don't know, a, maybe a couple thousand. I'm guessing. I'm not really quite sure. I I used to live in Detroit, where we used to have a larger Croatian community, and uh, I think the biggest Croatian community is probably 
Chicago, and then after that, um, Los Angeles, maybe. But it's in in Phoenix, where I live, it's not it's not it's not very big. So once in a while, we get together yeah. for a banquet or uh, soccer or something. But not uh, it's not too active. Not like it used to be back in uh, in Detroit, where I was from. Yeah, I think it should be uh, more of that activities uh, or uh, it's okay well you know here it's just difficult uh, because there's such few people and it doesn't have a it's a new community phoenix is relatively a new city so whereas detroit chicago uh they're older and uh you know they have croatian churches devoted just to the Croatian community in those cities. So they have a little easier time than we do because we don't have really a Croatian church. We just have a visiting priest who comes here a couple yeah. Sundays a month from Los Angeles. But, uh, you know, most of these cities have really beautiful churches that the Croatian communities built over the decades. And not just in America, but Sydney, Australia is unbelievable. They have... Oh, yeah, that's they have true. a very strong community because they they have strong churches and they have strong uh, social clubs and yeah. you know it, it's just unbelievable and you know I would have to I have a good friend of mine that lives in Sydney named Tomislav Beram and uh, he's been very active there and I think the people in Sydney should be very grateful for his activity uh, as well as uh, Fabian, Fabian uh, Lovokovic, who was also very active for decades. And because of them, in part, the communities are, are stronger than they would have been had those people not been, uh, not been involved. Yeah. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm smoking, so... <laughs> That's good. I, I used to smoke too, so I wish I could. Yeah, I kind of know. We pretend to be independent media, so it's <laughs> all kind of uh, independency, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, you, you even uh, did an interview uh, with some, uh, uh, what was he, uh, George Kennett. He was a uh, head of the... Yugoslav desk or something like that in, in, in the United States uh, administration. I don't know where he worked even. Uh, yeah, he was, he, was, he was he, in charge of the Yugoslav desk for the U.S. State Department. Yeah, and yeah, he, yeah. Uh, and, and he resigned. He resigned yeah, uh, from the position. In protest. In protest of the things. Uh, he, were, he wasn't satisfied with the way uh, his uh, office is dealing with, with uh, situation in, in Croatia, as I understood. So that's right. Yeah, uh, he was protesting uh, the way the the American foreign policy <laughs> was against uh, in Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina because he thought that these people deserved to defend themselves with arms, and um, the Americans and the United Nations wasn't allowing that to happen, and so he resigned in protest, which you know. It was a very high-level position he had at the State Department, and, but uh, yeah. he resigned, and then, to his credit, that, that's interesting to me because he's an American, right? Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, that's that's uh, nice to hear. I I miss him because uh, the last two, uh, uh, the last two uh, State Department uh reports for croatia on uh, i don't know uh, human rights and uh, state of the media and stuff uh, uh so a couple of uh last reports uh weren't so kind on us uh i don't know uh american ambassador to croatia the last one
I'm sorry, I can hear you now, I think. Oh, okay. We lost the connection somehow. I don't know. On a screen, I just got message on a screen. You lost your connection. Good job, man. <laughs> We're good now. Good. <laughs> oh, shit. So, uh, yeah, as I was saying, uh, Julieta Van Noyes, she was a former uh, US ambassador to Croatia. Uh, now, I, I, I don't know. Uh, by the uh, report, uh, uh, we do. I, I don't know how to put it, but it wasn't kind of. Uh, on uh, 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 patriots in Croatia. Uh -huh. <laughs> let's uh -huh. let's uh, put it let's put it that way. Uh, they put emphasis on the uh, on the uh, uh, I don't know racism, uh, uh, misogyny. Uh, 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 I don't know stuff against media. Uh, I don't know. It wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, uh, pleasing the uh, two year. So I, never, maybe, I didn't see that, but I, I'll look for it. I, I haven't seen what her the report was, but um, I'll yeah. look at it and see. Standard stuff about corruption uh, and the state of the judiciary, and we can relate to that. But uh, as far as uh, our treating uh, migrants, or uh, or uh, women, uh, they are completely off, uh, and that's uh, something that uh, uh, that might be uh, maybe connected to these. Uh, I will say socialists, but Yugoslav forces as well. Uh, the same one. Uh, uh, this this gentleman was uh, resigning. From his post for so uh, he resigned then <coughs> uh, f for the same reasons there are, uh, you know the same reasons are uh, simply here today so I don't know I, I would love to <laughs> talk to him about that and uh, and, and stuff because it does seem... yeah. I know that there was a lot of um, European Union and United Nations didn't like it when Croatia uh, put in their constitution that the marriage was between a man and a woman. And so they didn't like that. Um, but, you know, we face similar problems here in the United States and other countries too. Um, if I, I said before I would close with one other thing, but if I could just say one other additional thing. Yeah. You know, I think anybody who looks at Croatian history has to come to the realization that without the Catholic Church, I'm not saying you have to be Catholic to be Croatian because there's Muslim Croatians, there's atheist Croatians, so on and so forth. But without the Croatian Catholic Church in Croatia, for centuries, keeping the people together, keeping them on the correct road, keeping them close and always looking to God for assistance. Without that, I don't think that Croatia would even have thought about becoming independent. <clears throat> and I don't think it would be where it's at today if they did not turn to God, you know, you guys remember as well as I did. And I, I just talked about this once a, not too long ago, a month ago in Zagreb at uh, 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 Svete, Mate, Svete Mate Slobode Church in Zagreb. Mm -hmm. And I said that I remember during the war when the Croatian soldiers were going to the front with the rosary around their neck. Yeah, yeah. And I remember the banners over the streets that said Micah yeah. Boja Chuvainas. And I remember the, uh, in 1993, the Croatian Sabor actually asked in writing for the Blessed Mother to protect Croatia in 1993. So when we turn to God and ask for, I don't mean to sound like a, a priest, but yeah, because uh, I'm definitely uh, the biggest sinner. But 
when we turn to him and ask for his assistance and stay close to him, he's going to help us out of these problems. And, and when I say us, I mean Croatia, too. This, this is not going to last if we stay close to him and the Catholic Church, because the Catholic Church and the Croatian are so intertwined. You can't separate one thread from the other without destroying the fabric. So, you know, I see after centuries of this happening that uh, this is the answer for Croatia to stay close to the church. Uh, that's, that's all I have to say about that, but I feel strongly about that. Uh, yeah, uh, I would agree. And uh, I would say that uh, more and more people are uh, seeing that truth because uh, uh, these are definitely the times to think about things like like that so uh for us uh, tradition and our faith is uh, all we have and uh, we stood here for centuries and we are ain't going nowhere so <laughs> whatever comes That's our right. way uh, we are here uh, uh, no matter how many of us uh, but there will always be, as you uh, uh, said it, uh, along the way, uh, with uh, with a fire in our hearts, and uh, and the uh, understanding of what uh, keeps Croatia what it is, and uh, it will always be. So, yeah. Uh, with that, I know uh, uh, we got a couple more days uh to big day uh world will decide <laughs> the, okay americans will decide for us uh i ain't gonna uh, ask you about your opinion uh, uh i was uh, measuring my words a minute ago <laughs> so so uh, uh, shit. Uh, uh we are speaking in english and this uh, facebook police are very <laughs> active lately, so i must <laughs> watch what i'm saying but uh i ain't gonna say anything but this this hat is hanging <laughs> here <laughs> <laughs> so the, this this hat is here from the start so so god bless uh, everyone and michael thank you so much man uh, i don't know what to say uh i i hope uh, uh this all made sense uh for our viewers uh it is first time for us uh, to speak in english and and doing an interview like this and we are so proud uh that uh, it went like this uh, for me it was great and it was great seeing you and uh, once more I'm, I'm i thank you and uh, uh as anyone else uh when you come once to chuka uh, you're always welcome uh, to come again and talk to us. I have one somewhere. question for Mike before we oh, yeah, of <clears> finish. Uh, Mike, uh, what do you think? How you uh, translate our poglet shuk? Oh, yeah. Is it uh -huh. something like... Uh... Uh, like watch chuka. That's the way I would... <laughs> I, mean, uh... <laughs> I mean, like it's, uh, it's a kind of a, a, a view from the hill. Uh -huh. a view, a view from a hill. I mean, Chuka is a hill. Every soldier knows. I mean, that's the whole essence of being a soldier. But is Chuka, Chuka is a military. Yeah, it's a military term. Uh -huh. Chuka is a military term. It's it's a it's a hill. So every soldier uh, in every war either want wants to be on the hill, hill. He, uh, either uh, he is on the hill uh, or he wants to be on a hill. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, all yeah, about yeah, yeah. hill. <laughs> uh, no, no, thank you for telling me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Chuka yeah. is the hill, and uh, the view, Pogles Chuka is the view from the hill, and uh, we bring a uh, veteran's view uh, on the things that surround us. So uh -huh. that, that's, that's a great name, great name. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's Pogles Chuka, what it actually means. Vantage so, point. So I don't know what in English, what would uh, uh, some GI Joe say? Uh, uh, how, wh what's the term for chuka or hill uh, in English? Yeah, I, uh, I don't know what the, if there's a different it's military hill. term or not. It's a hill, yeah. 
It's so, Hill. Uh, it's uh, you got all these movies. Analogy. Yeah, you got all these <laughs> movies. Hill, that, hill, this hill, yeah, yeah. that, that, hill. It's always hill. So, yeah, the, the Chuka is hill. So, You're right. I, I thank you for joining us on our hill yeah. uh, <laughs> once again. And God bless you and your lovely wife and uh, everyone around you. Uh, and what else to say? Thank you very much, Petso and Yozo. And I appreciate it. I really am honored to, to be with you guys. I have a really a, a strong place in my heart for veterans, Croatian veterans, uh, because I witnessed what you guys uh, actually went through. So, uh, you know, uh, thank you so much for everything that you've done and for what you're continuing to do. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. Thank, thank you for all who follow this our broadcast and God bless all of us. Good night. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Bye. Amen to that. Good night, Do Michael. Vidimo se skoro. Vidimo se skoro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. God bless. <laughs> bye, bye. Oh. Okay. Uh, oh. uh, we yeah, we, we're still on. We're still on, man. Uh, yeah, 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 we, we need to close. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm to go to the next one. I'm going to go to kad <laughs> preskočim koji komentar ne vidim neko pitanje onda je se nižu ono... vrlo brzo i vrlo teško je pratiti i govoriti i razmišljati o onome o čemu se priča. Da. Nadam se da je bilo zanimljivo, znam bilo je na engleskom. Mi ćemo bilo je ovdje savjeta, ajde odmah iza emisije pa nam malo ovaj objasnio svemu, ali evo ja predlažem peci da napravimo jednu emisiju o ovome vezano i za knjigu i za ovaj, uh, i za ovaj film, jer on je jako interesantan. Je. Mi smo pokazali samo jedan dio kratki Samo jedan dio, dio nismo teli gnjavi previše, da. Uh, tako je, i imamo uh, film sa prijevodom, tako da bi možda bilo to interesantno pogledat uh, na taj način. Evo, jedan dan kad budemo imali manje, manje obaveca. Uh, eto, toliko. To je to, napokon, nemamo šta. Eh. Napokon da zapalim na miru. Na, zapalim na miru, čeće, znaš šta, ono nije bilo ovo lako, ovo, kada yeah. sklikove radiš, ono, yeah. mi, na engleskom je radit. E, nadam se da vam nije bilo toliko dosadno, kao inače, vi šta ste razumili. <laughs> Ali šta ću vam ja, e, bolje nego Ingrid Antičević, ja mislim bilo, tako da. <laughs> nije teško to premašit. Tako da, e. Eto ga. Uh, pozdrav Joanka, hvala ti što si pratila uh, i vama svima naravno uh, laka i ugodna noć, Bog vam da sreću i zdravlje i naročiti pozdrav našim suborkinjama i suborcima uh, di go bili šta god radili. Bog i vidimo se, čekaj, petak, svi petak. u petak. Je. petak. Eto ga, vidimo se u petak. Bog vam da. Bog laka noć. Bog i laka noć. Oh, oh.